It's Brian Shannon from AlphaTrends.net. Today's Friday, the 17th of February 2017, and we have a long weekend coming up. So uh, let's take a look at this market and see where we leave it for the week. We had a real nice week for equities. Once again, uh, the path of least resistance is higher, and it is innocent till proven guilty. We only saw that oil and bonds were off slightly. Everything else was uh, positive for the week. So let's take a look here at the charts, the S&P 500. These are some notes I had drawn on earlier in the week. If you saw the Wednesday video I'd posted to do, uh, Twitter and uh, also, um, you know, looking at that daily time frame, we remain above all the key moving averages. We're making higher highs and higher lows and we're up at all time highs. So there's nothing to be bearish about here. A lot of people get really anxious and are looking for the top and think that it has to end badly because it's up a lot lately. But the fact is, as I said Wednesday, if you have a plan for risk management, you know where your stops are. That's all full talk you just have to have your stops and manage risk know what your time frame is and currently on the intermediate term time frame uh, we still remain innocent till proven guilty we broke beyond some resistance uh, uh, two weeks ago and then it's been higher highs and higher lows for the week our volume weighted average price we remained above for all but a very short period of time here Tuesday morning when the market gapped lower but it really quickly recovered and we're back above that and holding we're also above the rising five-day moving average going into next week I think that uh, if we break uh, below 233.75 uh, and hold below there for more than a half hour then perhaps we could see a little bit deeper pullback but I did mention also that uh, measured move price objective uh, that uh, is you know starts from uh, point A right here to point B and then we add the height of that to uh, the point B to point C right here giving us a price or uh, upward objective of uh, close to 243 on the SPY so it remains innocent till proven guilty don't listen to the people who are continually warning that it will end badly and that uh, it's overvalued or whatever the, the point is just manage risk that's what your job should be if you focus on managing risk you don't have to worry all the time and look over your shoulder it becomes a much saner way of approaching the market and the Nasdaq continues into all-time high territory here you know this market broke out uh, several months ago and is just continuing to ramp higher so there's nothing here that says a top is being made or about to be made you could do a similar measured move in the Nasdaq from 118 up to 125 let's just call it to be conservative so uh, that would be uh, what would be that be? That would be seven uh, seven points. Uh, add that to the low of point C of 124. Gives us a price upward objective of 131. Maybe that's where it runs into a brick wall. I wouldn't expect that, but it's the potential level where we might encounter some supply, and it would be prudent to uh, you know watch your risk carefully up in that area. But we're riding this trend line here. We're riding above the rising five-day moving average. We're closing at all-time highs. How can you be better? when that happens ignore the people who are telling you about all these imaginary risks instead focus on where's your stop going to be if it's based on the definition of the intermediate term trend we have these higher highs and higher lows choose the one that you put you know your stop under and if you're just, uh, a longer term trader choose the level where you need to put your stop under and realize that only liars consistently get out at the high end of any move the Russell 2000 for the week was a little bit more neutral here now we did see that uh, it, it uh, gained uh, 0.86 percent and it's been a little bit of a laggard this year you can see we're up three percent versus the uh, Nasdaq close to ten percent um, but we can see uh, going back to that and that's my other uh, charting program uh, that on the Russell 2000 here and this is the the charting platform I use mainly because of these volume weighted average price levels it's just in my mind an invaluable tool the uh, five-day moving average that's the blue line we're above that in the Russell 2000 the week to date volume weighted average price is this line in here and you can see we've got a little cluster under there so it tells me that right now as long as we remain above 138 going to 138 and a quarter next week I think that this market has the potential to be able to continue to catch up to the rest of the markets uh, broader markets performance as we know we've been giving the benefit of the doubt to the buyers while it's been in this slightly corrective mode in here and we broke higher a week and a half ago and now it's just digesting that little run-up I think though that uh, as long 
long as you remain under 138, uh, above rather 138 to 138 and a quarter, that uh, the risk is that you're going to miss out on uh, opportunity here because this market looks the best from a risk reward standpoint. It hasn't had a big run. We pulled back a little bit and we have a very good place to set our stop under uh, for expected continuation from this level. Now the semiconductors are a different story. They've had a phenomenal run here. We know all last year people were trying to pick the top and saying they were up too much and they continue to beat that same drum how they have any money left uh, you know after being negative on these uh, you know this strong group for so long is, is anyone's guess but again it's just noise the only thing that matters is price action not what one or two analysts say not one or what one or two companies results are in a sector even if the primary trend for the sector is higher the job is to remain along that sector and know where your stop levels are. On the intermediate term time frame, uh, 76 and a quarter will be an important level uh, next week. We had a little bit of resistance here uh, late last week into this week. It was tested and held as support. It's also now where we see that rising five day moving average. So if we come down and test it, no big deal. If we come down, test it, bounce and then break lower, then be a little bit more defensive. Biotechs, uh, we mentioned this group that uh, the, the volume weighted average price from the high in 2015 had been acting as resistance uh, during the decline over in here again here and then in the last year as it's been kind of going more sideways looking at a weekly time frame you know it's it's really looking like we've had uh, a beautiful stage two uptrend over here higher highs higher lows all the moving averages heading higher we underwent distribution stage four decline lower highs lower lows with all these longer term moving averages heading lower and now we're in this stage Still, uh, we're still in a uh, phase of accumulation stage one uh, it would have to break above this level but you don't just automatically buy above that high for a longer term hold uh, you have to ask yourself how does it get there and where would you place your risk so what we do when we look at this weekly time frame is we drill down to a shorter term time frame and try to put a micro put it under a microscope by looking at the daily action and the daily action says you know that we had a little bit of trouble up near 300 late last Last year and in, in the you know late second and th or, sorry third and into the fourth quarter of last year if we continue up towards that level the ideal scenario wouldn't be that you buy a quick break beyond that but it breaks higher it pulls back consolidates a little bit but right now that's you know that's for a longer term holder the intermediate term trend remains definitely still higher here and I'd mentioned that on uh, Wednesday that yes we have the potential for resistance with this longer term volume weighted average price off the 2015 peak but it doesn't mean it will become resistance it means just slow down ask yourself where has it just come from well this most recent leg higher really started right here at let's say 279 and up to 299 basically 295 it's had a nice run some further consolidation or pull back would be very healthy for this market and it would set it up for uh, a refreshment to go attack that 300 level and maybe even run through it. Uh, Apple just been a monster since earnings. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the volume weighted average price since the earnings report and more importantly that rising five day moving average. We still make higher highs and higher lows above it. If you're an intermediate term trader, my belief is your stop should be underneath this level, which would get it below the five day moving average and break a lower low here. Uh, but it's really remarkable how well the stock is behaving. Uh, there's nothing here to say you should sell it now if you're an intermediate term holder. Perhaps you take some profits underneath that level right there. Uh, the bonds, uh, you know, they're, they're a weak group. I mean, we've got a declining 50 day moving average. We've got a declining 100, 150, and 200 day moving average. These things simply, you know, sit typically rather, don't just turn themselves immediately around. Look at the last few declines that we saw in the bonds. This big decline and this big decline. If you look at those two and say, where could we be right now? I'd say we're either right here or we're right in this area. So, you know, the bonds are still in a downtrend. They're guilty till proven innocent. They're making uh, still this, you know, lower highs 
with this declining 50-day moving average to stay away from them. Let them settle down. There's no reason to be involved so early right now. NVIDIA we've been talking about, uh, and you know, it's it's trying to find some support at this rising 50-day moving average. And uh, the volume weighted average price from the November 11th gap higher is a little bit below where this market is, down at about 103. Ideally, it would flush down to that level. I think that would actually make it stronger. But right now, there's still no real reason reason for an intermediate term trend trader to be long shares of Nvidia because since they reported earnings over here it's been uh, you know it got clocked and then lower highs and lower lows below a declining five day moving average so maybe it settles down next week I like I said I'd prefer it comes down and test that volume weighted average price uh, from November 11th and that's just simply grabbing this little anchored uh, uh, volume weighted average price clicking my mouse and there we can see it that's where we found support as expected this this route this run and now though you know you've got to look at uh, some other things uh, as far as Nvidia goes such as the fact that it broke below the volume and held below the volume weighted average price from that last spike low so uh, still no clear reason to be a uh, fresh buyer since earnings and shares of NVIDIA. It's undergoing a little bit of profit taking and we'll continue to monitor and see how it behaves. Um, you know, we had some great winners in, in uh, Alpha Trends. I'm sure you did this week too. So, so some of the things I'm more proud of though are not the winners necessarily, but getting into a stock like PI right here before earnings and then warning that you cannot hold a stock, especially after it's had a run like this before earnings. So I was pleading with subscribers to sell it yesterday before earnings came out and we had this large drop here so that's the type of stuff that I like to focus on finding winners and managing them NOV was a stock we got involved in as a uh, swing trade we got involved long right in here we took a third of it off as it rallied and we raised our stop to this point and this morning we were stopped out of it and you know the result is that we made a little bit of money on the third position we basically broke even on two-thirds of a position and then this thing just fell apart so it's good to be on the sidelines and cash. I've also been talking about this ATI. And ATI, you know, I've been talking about it bullishly because I like the setup. Uh, we've been talking about this big short position, 26 million shares, and the fact that it looks like it has the potential maybe to rally up towards this prior band of support in here, um, you know, if those shorts were to get motivated. And we've been watching it, watching it, waiting for a place to purchase it. So this week we saw a gap higher. And then on... Uh, uh, Wednesday I, I put this uh, on as a potential buy if it could get back above there and this is basically what I was looking for is for it to kind of run up get above this volume weighted average price from that gap that I just drew in right here find some resistance pull back hold there and then to get long with a stop underneath the most recent relevant higher low instead the stock just continued lower no reason to be involved in it knowing when to sit on the sidelines and cash and wait even though you might like the story a lot and look at it and say good earnings good short position potentially could help it only price pays you have to make your decisions based on price action we anticipate all the potential scenarios as it's consolidating and we wait for price confirmation before we actually put our money to uh, to risk and then our job is to manage risk a couple names for next week that look like they might be able to continue higher are Sienna this stock broke some resistance in here and uh, you know getting going once again with a you know probably with a worst case stop underneath uh, this level here this band of support would be uh, a, a good way to go but only buying on strength as it breaks some resistance, not just buying uh, blindly. Dry DRI, this is Darden. I wanted to buy this one. Uh, I was hoping it would hold until Monday. It had this really nice little flag in here that had been forming since it broke this resistance on the daily time frame. It has a rising 10, 20, and 50 day moving average. It's got good average daily volume looking at a 30 minute time frame. It was consolidating in here now down to a 15 minute. You can see that we've got you know the five day moving average rising once again. What I'm going to be looking for is I, I certainly don't want to be the guy who buys uh, a breakout you know above the high that it's had in the last uh, two weeks here because again ask yourself where has it come from it's just rallied from 75 and a half to 76.75 instead I'd rather see it break out then pull back 
uh, early next week and then look to buy some strength as it emerges here and then put our stop underneath the most recent relevant higher low. These are the types of stocks I talk about every single day in alpha trends. I generally go over uh, you know half dozen or so of those. So if that's of interest to you, take a look. If not, enjoy your long weekend and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you.